Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Julian. I'm here to do my reaction video for season, well, for episode two, because it's not a season, it's a limited series. Uh, for episode two of The Fall of the House of Usher, uh, I just finished watching the first episode like 10 minutes ago. It was really good. There's a lot to impact to unpack. I don't know how the hell they're going to tell this story. Although the episodes are very, very long. I mean, not very long. They're an hour long, not Stranger Things movie-like kind of long, but still, you know. Um, the title of the second episode is The Mask, The Mask, The Mask of the Red Death. Okay, alrighty then. So, we're here, we are back, and we are most definitely ready for the second episode of this new uh, Mike Flanagan show. Uh, like I said, there's a lot to unpack because there's a lot of cast members, okay? So we have six children, plus their significant others, plus like, you know, friends, possibly, I don't know, I don't know, I, one of them has a, a child, uh, meaning that Ro Roderick is a grandfather. She's the only one that is alive, I feel. And uh, 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 so far. Um, but yeah, you know. I like the how we're going in. And I feel like uh, Carla Gugino, right? She's, she's going to have a bigger impact to the story. I just have a feeling. I don't know if both of them f fall in love with her <laughs> or something like that, but something creepy is about to happen. Not that they will fall in love with the same woman is creepy, but because the show, this type of shows are creepy. So yeah, I'm ready for episode two and I hope you guys are ready as well. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you love this type of show. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell on Car Reaction. Always post it first on Patreon in case you guys want to check that out. Link, as always, will be in the description down below. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys like it. Hope you guys continue supporting. And for now, I think that's about it. Yeah, thank you for watching. And that's it. Let's just begin with episode two of The Fall of the House of Usher. Here we go. <laughs> Make me confiscate that camera. You can't, unless I'm being charged with the crime. Don't push me, Mr. Dupin. I told you. Oh, it is him. Before, this is serious business, and you're not supposed to be here. Yes. Respect, come on. Nobody holds anybody to account. You know that. Oh, okay, so th this is a racing in his case, and the police not doing anything. Were oh. they involved? What year is this? <laughs> the people in charge of making... But we aren't here to talk about that. We are here aren't we? to talk about... Wait. Oh, he make you look, what? though. <gasps> Did I see something? Or am I imagining shit now? <clears throat> Which is entirely possible. There's someone there, right? There's someone there, like... Where's my finger? <laughs> That's what she said. Uh... Like, right next to his head. Right next to his head. There's someone there, isn't it? There's someone there. There's someone there! Or not, I don't know. Perry was the first of my children to die. Oh. And I know you think you know how that happened. But it didn't happen that way. But you don't. Well, the first thing you have to understand about my son, crazy. Okay, he likes orgies. <laughs> oh. He's wearing more money in his neck and arm, wrist, that I have in my bank account. Also, I don't have money in my bank account, but still, man. <laughs> my God. Threatening oh, people, okay. Can't be going there. Oh. No, I think he will have kill you. Here they are. Doesn't like my idea? Maybe we dodged a bullet. Okay, I mean, you still huh. seem... Dickwad. You still seem like you're living at large, though, so... Okay. 
This is my brother, Frederick. Uh -huh. Actually, some of these are a fucking gold mine. If this <laughs> one is ours, I want to see it. It's perfect for this idea. <laughs> yeah. I can I talk to you for a moment? Debauchery. Can I talk to you for a moment? Excuse <laughs> us, please. Do you want us? Let's go. You could be invited. What the fuck no. are you doing? I'm getting to know the family business like that. Do you know how many attorneys they brought? Seven. Six. Okay, they brought six. Do you know how many we brought? One. Because Arthur into six pieces instead of five. Fucking bastard. Oh my god, why would you say that? He's still your brother, you asshole! My god. Can you believe do you, the, the power of money? You know, it can bring out the worst in people. We're throwing a party. It's just he feels that they don't take him serious. Oh! <laughs> Are we all seeing? No, no, it's just him. I mean, don't just. Don't, can't. Okay. Okay, let's make a human. Like. A living, breathing animal suffer. I, I will never be able to do that. I understand that in order to to help humanity, which sometimes at, the, at some points you're like, F fuck us, you know. But, you know, you have to test on animals, but I, I feel like it, this is just, it's just horrendous, you know? They feel, still, they're, they're living things. The trial threshold, if my 200 million is coming up snake eyes, you'll tell me, right? I mean, yeah, of course. 200 million dollars? 200 million dollars? 200 million dollars. How much money do you have, man? See? There should be a rule <laughs> on how rich people can get. Because 200 million, do you know how much? I mean, I understand. I don't know what is it that she's trying to discover that possibly will help people with heart problems, I guess. I don't know what is it that she's doing. But, like, you know how much, how much that could help others as well? Like... I'm gonna shut up. I need this to work. Wait, well, you've been watching fucking Narcos <laughs> or something? Because you should, if you haven't. It's brilliant. Okay, it's brilliant. what about it's here. Mm. And it's here on, on Netflix, so. Yeah, I've got to stash out that. You do? No, I don't. No. Because I'm a stallion in my fucking prime. And why the f But you're better than all of this. Okay. And the minute you figure that out, bruv, you're gonna be unstoppable. That's sweet. He's the only one who's actually sweet to him. All right. Just for you. See if you can find something. Mm. And if you can't find something, we... I just... I don't want to be that person. I want to be that bitch. But, like, I will let her step on me. <laughs> Does that say something about me? Yes. That I'm fucking queer. And I love it. You know? She can step... On me, like, just step on me for for no reason. Was I don't need a reason. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, ushers aren't idiots, except Perry. Uh, uh, why? File and Juno's. So, Camille, Camille, okay. Well, Juno, but there's something that stinks about Vic's clinical trial. That might. Okay, one 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 thing I wanna I wanna I, 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 uh, what is her company about? Might be the feds way in if they have something on her heart mesh thing. What did she do to you? I'm sorry. What was that? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> You're not supposed to judge her. Nothing. I, I mean, I I hate my sister too, but <laughs> she's like, what's your I point? Really forget I said anything. Whole joke I told him once. Remember the golden rule. <gasps> That's Perry, right? The comic book. And in the last little word bubble, it says, whoever has the gold makes the... <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Can they finish the sentence though? I wanna know. Are you, are you alright? Yes, of course. You'll, you'll make billions doing this, that's true. But that's not why you do it. But who is he? So who is he? Uh, uh, the guy that he's pitching this to. Because I thought they <laughs> were the heirs. But no. Okay, I got that all wrong. My boob again. <laughs> I wonder... Okay, so by this time he had already two children. The first two. Maybe it's time to move on from that place. Financial markets, investments, predictive medical care. Hell, an algorithm could write movies and TV shows. <laughs> Not no. Well. You'll see. No. <laughs> Isn't that what you guys are fighting? Like, the actors are fighting for so AI doesn't <laughs> start writing shit or doing shit for you. Okay. <laughs> Consciousness. See, the ancients, they all wanted to live on after they died. Is there a sarcophagus there? The fuck? That, that means you have a lot of money and nothing to spend it on. Why does she have a sarcophagus there? My God. I go, everybody. Okay, we'll keep looking. We'll find them. Surprise, that's oh, a fuck. Oh. oh my God. Come in, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Hi, Grandpa. And grateful I could just blow him and. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you should say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lovely story. <laughs> oh, what can I do for you, Perry? You should come. <laughs> no, thank you. Perry, that's insane. No, it's not. I still... He just wants to fuck with Frederick, you know? <laughs> you look beautiful tonight. Who is this? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Anything? We've got fillers into the staff at the testing facility. An experimental new nightshade agent. Yawn. And we're thinking maybe. Wait, wait, wait. What is happening? Place, right? Some whispers about an egg. What yeah, are they doing? That place, right? Roderick Usher Experimental. She fucks them? They fuck her? They, they... What? I thought they were her... Employees. Well... If I... I, I will let her. If I was her employee, so... Okay, careful. This feels like elite. Hello. Was that the woman that was on top of the building? Oh my god. Who are you? I thought you'd never catch up. Well, you don't make it easy. Hmm. Nothing Hi. worth having is ever easy. It's my kind of party. It's yours too, isn't it? You like it? I do. <gasps> Just look at her. Just look at her. Just look at her. But, uh, 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 Okay, I'm just gonna continue watching. Mm, the music. And tonight, you are consequential. What, you gonna kill him? <sighs> you are one crazy. You always just love. I'm not a bad boy and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that. You are pretty. 
and there will be con consequences. Was she there to? Was she there to warn him to not to do this? What's happening? Wait, the staff is going. Before the rain starts, right? Oh! That's it! Shit! My god! My god! I mean, she warned him that he could stop it. And she told her to... <laughs> oh my god! Oh shit! Okay, she's not alive, right? Okay, guys, so that was the end of the fall of the House of Usher, episode two out of eight, which, you know, I'm going to savor it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go full, like, crazy and, like, just, like, bench all of it in like a single day or like a couple of days and like no I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take it you know I'm gonna I'm gonna process it I'm going to let it be <laughs> uh and uh you know just let it let it be there for me and linger a little bit because I feel like for instance with yellow jackets that I love, I consume that show, but it, that show is very addictive. And it is, I feel, it, that, that there is a need of consuming the show as much, as much as the characters are, you know, in that stage of... Well, I'm not going to spoil Yellow Jackets for you guys, but, like, if you haven't watched it, go and fucking watch it. Like, it's just, it's a masterpiece. That's all I have to say. It's a masterpiece. Okay? Um, anyway, so, episode two. Right? We meet our first death out of the six children. The last one. Uh, Prospera? Or Perry? As he calls himself um, is there right uh, it's trying to prove something uh, it's trying to prove something to to all of them I feel right I think I don't know the order of the kids we only I think we only know that the P Perry w is the last one. And that Frederick and the other sister, the the uh, the one with the red hair, right? Uh, what is it? Annabelle? I th uh, Annabelle? Oh my god. I don't know. But like, she's the second, right? Born out of the first marriage of Roderick, right? Uh... And then the others, I don't know the order of them. Like, right? We only know that he is the last of them. The sixth. So, but we know that for a long time, the five of them, though they have become jealous of each other and they are jealous of each other uh, in one way or, or another, and they are always there to seek approval from their dad, um, you know, they were comfortable or thought that the pie was going to get 
you know, divided into five pieces. And they were okay with that. In comes Perry, right? Uh, and they all hate him for that. Most of them hate him for that. Uh, the other brother that I do not remember his name. Um, I'm, I'm learning the names very slowly. Camille is Kate, uh, Kate Siegel's uh, character. Then there's Frederick, Annabelle. Then there's the two that I don't know. Um, three that I don't know, I think. Wait. I'm missing one. Two. There's th there are six of them. Well, five now, but... The first two. Then Kate. The other two that I don't know. Kate, who's Camille. The other two that I don't know. Oh, Vic, Vic, Vic right? The other one I do not know. And then Perry. So, I'm gonna guess that Perry kind of, like... You know, it seemed like the, the brother, the, this other brother, is a little bit more uh, sweet or or at least tries to understand the pressure that he might be on, you know? Um, and he understands that and wants to help him. You know, he's like, look, dude, like, you are smart. You are powerful you could be anything you want to be and just being a dealer or being uh, a, a which ultimately is in his family just dealers but with a suit but you know what I mean uh, the legality and like you know illegality of some things drugs at the end, end of the day but he's like you can do so much more like, you're smarter than the fucking DJ. Or how to turn... Or how to make a, a party, you know? How to, out of nowhere, make a million bucks. Like, you're smarter than that, you know? Um, and I think he is. But there are so many things in his head. You know, how all his siblings, or most of his siblings, look down on him because he is... You know, for the first two, they call the other three the bastards, right? Because they come from, you know, maybe affairs or, you know, uh, from his dad. And Perry is the last of them, right? And he came into, like, for a time they were like, okay, five, we're going to divide the fortune into five. And then in comes Perry, right? And so they immediately hate him. Uh, for his existence, though he n never chose to be in this world, and it was his dad's, you know, decision to do so. Um, but they still hate him, you know, and he is even more of a bastard in the first two's eyes, and even for the other ones, you know. I feel like, you know, when you ha have been in a position, I feel they all are very close in age, and Perry isn't. Or wasn't. And because of that, you know, I think that there is some, like, you know, the two that believe they're superior and the other three kind of, you know, kind of like not feeling like that, but feeling it and, you know. Uh, and then when they have the opportunity to be above someone, just like the first two are above them, in their fucked up little competition that they have going on, then it's their time to make someone else feel like crap, you know? So, yes, I understand that uh, Perry is kind of a wild card in a sense. Uh, how he uh, uh, maybe doesn't take things too serious. Uh, how, you know, the idea of saving the world... It's not so much in his peripheral right now. Um, and how this was just put on him, you know. I think that if you... I mean, if you're not distracted by the beauty that Carla is, 
you know, you kind of understand partially because I was very distracted. Um, but you kind of understand the uh, what she's saying in the sense of like, there is a moment before you make a decision, right? After there is just consequences that you either have to live with it or, or with them or not, right? Uh, some of them are able to escape, some of them are not. Um, but that that's what it is, you know, consequences. Uh, and she feels like you are that a result of a small choice made uh, in a moment of uh, lust, of whatever, and you're here trying to prove something uh, and you have the ability right now to stop it. But she knows or at least... Uh, assumes, which I don't know, I'm going to guess that she is dead. Okay? I'm going to assume that. Uh, one, because although she does seem a little bit more, like a little bit age, like older than when we see her in the flashback. Right? Um, but the thing is with, with her is that there's some mystical element about her, you know, and she shows up all in red, which we know is kind of like, you know, Perry's favorite color, right? And she has this like death mask on her and she tries to save Perry, but Perry's too into his own mind to realize what she's actually saying. Uh, and then she actually tries, she does save, like, everyone who was there working. Not there for pleasure, not there because, you know, they have the luxury of affording a $10,000, $20,000 invitation to a seclude party that will turn into an orgy at some point, you know. I don't know. I'm not one to judge. Not because I will not do it. I will judge people that would or I will think that they should be dead because of it. That's just, that's not what I think at all. Uh, my point is that um, it was Perry. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I Do I believe that in some point like he sacrificed or promised his children to something greater in order to push forward because we know that the pill that he that he says he invented though he is not the one he, who invented invented it uh, gets out in 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 into the world um and that's this is the price that he has to pay for it and that he knew eventually that she was coming for them I wonder, you know, I wonder if that's what it ultimately is. You know, that he knew that this was coming, in a sense. And that's why he thinks that he killed his children. Because that's what he's saying to the uh, district attorney, whatever, you know. So, I feel that uh, there is a lot more to talk about their relationship. Now... I just want to point something out. He is married. He does have children. Why did Madeline didn't? Is she gay? Because I'm sitting here and like she is. And I'm like, why? Why didn't she have like and all and like they are there like in that place. I don't know if whose home that is. If it's Frederick's or Frederick's and Roderick's. Uh, or uh, battling, I, I don't know whose house it is, but she's there as well, you know, and she's very smart, and she's, you know, and she also has to live in, in a time where she's not being taken serious, you know, uh, and kind of like she had to, she has to, 
pave her way through the top, to the top, but still has to do it at the expense of her brother because her brother is the one that will open the doors because he has a dick <laughs> in his pants. That's it, you know? And I think in some way she does believe she is smarter than him. But, you know, there is this type of kind of like solidarity and, and, and you know, between them. Um, so this might be related to... To all, or maybe she decided to not have children to kind of cheat on the, you know, deal with the devil or something like that. I have no idea. Anyway, so, um, yeah, well, she's not married. We know, well, we don't know if she has, hasn't been married, like, at all, you know. Uh, but we do know that she doesn't have children, Right? Um, I think, I don't know. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. So the pitch that they made, honestly, honest, let's be real. Like there is, you know, he presents it to this guy. Okay. First of all, I thought that the, what is the name of the, the company that their, the, the, their mom worked at? That lab, right? That then later is owned by them, right? Um, I thought they were the children of that man. And that that man did not have children because he was like, you know, you have to beat them up and things like that. So I was under the impression from the first episode that he did not have children to inherit that. But did he? Because... There, he, there is a person running this place. Though it could be a, a bore and they decided on a CEO, right? I'm not sure because his last name is Griswold as well. Rufus Griswold or something like that. Um, but we do know that they, they somehow do eventually own this pharmaceutical and then you know the millions and the dollars and everything starts to get in uh not because because they 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 honestly the pitch was incredible like i don't deal with chronic pain okay i do have back pain because of you know working you know, sitting down most of the day and, you know, so you do have back pain. You do have sometimes headaches and, you know, and pain, it's a horrible thing, you know, and I have been able, sadly, to um, accompany someone, my uncle, uh, not even a year ago, go through you know, this experience of pain and not feeling relief, not even with morphine, you know. So, um, I understand from from my perspective as a possible consumer or a person who has someone, you know, that it's, it's uh, also sick. You understand, like, this pill, it's presented to you as, like, pain relief, non-addictive, which at the end of life, it's kind of like, that's an, like, you, you don't even care if it's addictive or not. You just want it to work. Um, and it's there and, and it's promising. It's, it seemed like, it's just like, it's like a vitamin you take, you know, it's, it's, it, it's promised to you as like no side effects, no addiction, you know, it's just like, I don't know, ibuprofen, but like just to the next level, you know, and they have dos dosages for it as well. So it's something that is very intriguing to say the least, you know. So to me, they put me the pill there. I will be like, mm. <laughs> you know, because like who doesn't want a life without pain and without physical pain sometimes? I mean, 
emotional pain and all of that, that's on a whole another level that is, you know, sometimes even more exhausting than physical pain. Because for physical pain, you do have options, you know. Um, but like going into the opioid, you know, and like saying that this is the one that is not going to get you addicted and all of that, when you know that it is, it's kind of fucked up that he pitches that way, us knowing that it is not as this miracle drug that he's talking about, but still feeling like, man, I will take that. Give me two, <laughs> five more for, uh, for the road. Honestly, you know, so it's kind of like mind blowing uh, that they have lied to the world from the get-go, you know? Uh, him, Roderick, with his pitch for... Um, uh, for the pharmaceutical side of it, and then Madeline f with her ideas of, like, AI is the answer for everything. And I'm here sitting like, bitch, are you all fighting for that not to happen in the industry? <laughs> You know, because there was a writer strike that I think has ended because they have they have gone into an agreement, but the um you know agreement with the actors, guile thing, uh, right, has not come tr come through yet, but hopefully it g gets to a better point. Um, I do not approve. I do not feel like, you know technology should get to the point where it replaces someone and he gets them out of their job. Which, let's be real, I am doing something that in the past could only have been done by multiple people. Recording, audio mixing, all of it. You know what I mean? Lighting, even though I just turn on my light, that's it. I don't have more things, you know, going on. But, you know what I mean, it's, it's, it's understandable that, you know, technology w will advance. But, as the, the wife said, you know, we humans have the capacity, hopefully, and will be the thing that at the end of the day makes the difference between choosing and doing and creating this wonderful... Um, things that AI will not be able to do that, right? I mean, AI right now is like, in terms of like uh, I feel software image is doing like, ain't fucking credible, you know? And is, to be honest, leaving people with thou jobs in sense of like, design and things like that you know, but there is still a bit of like because I saw that little clip of Disney on a movie, right? That replaced people with background uh, AI generated, uh, or 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 they took some people, scanned some people, and they're just reusing their images um, without paying them, which is it's ridiculous. Okay, you don't want hundreds of people on set, fine, right? But if you're gonna use them. You gotta still pay them. It's not like a one-day job and you can use them forever. Like, that's just shitty, you know? So, uh, but Madeline, Madeline, Madeline does believe in that. And has, ha, has, has tell Leon, Leon, Leonor, Eleanor, I don't know, the granddaughter. Uh, she has asked her to, like, write... A journal of like every day everything because she she wants that data so she can configure and make a carbon copy of her and you know make it realize or make it seem or or prove that that AI generated consciousness that will take the da data for it from everywhere and plus the diaries and all of it will be able to make the same decisions as the human one you know and she f she feels confident about it and i'm like 
a little bit scared <laughs> of that because I don't know. I mean, I feel like the more rich you get, the more you want to live forever, right? And ultimately, they all do that. They all want to live forever. They believe themselves to be immortal in one way or another, you know? So they always are achieving, rich people are achieving that, right? Trying to, at least. But, you know, so far death comes for the poor and the rich in the same way. Well, sometimes... I be- I just, you know, my grandma was a very uh, a much of a believer that you couldn't cheat death. When you die, the day you die. Not a day before, not a m- minute before, or a minute after. You die the day that you're supposed to, you know? Um, so because of that, I don't believe that just because, you know, one person... For instance, a person that doesn't have money, poor person, getting themselves, let's just point a, a more recent event, getting COVID and dying from COVID, you know, very soon. Uh, and a person that, that has money, got infected, but has the resources to find the help and survive. For me, it's not like, or what I believe it's not that it's just because of their money that they were able to survive. It wasn't their time, in my opinion. If it was, they were they will be dead. You know what I mean? That's what my my grandma used to say. You don't die in the eve or something like that. No, no uh, nadie se muere en la víspera. I don't know if that's how you translate it. But, like, uh, you don't die in the eve or the day before or the minute before. Or you die the day that you die, you know? So, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You can't cheat death. You know what I mean? So, in my opinion, that is true. Granted. Can you get a more comfortable death because of money? Sure. Better care at the end of it? Sure. But if you have a type of cancer or a type of disease, you will still feel the pain. Granted, one will feel it worse because they don't have the means to get the drugs that they need. The other one wouldn't, but death is death at the end of the day. Anyways, I'm going in circles, I feel. Um... But the thing is that I uh, there there's also this uh, this other thing said, which is like, uh, what's his name? The fact that Rod Roderick is now confessing is because he feels that there is this disease apparently or illness that he suffers from where he hallucinates and he's starting to. So he is like, you know, and the doctor maybe coming in, telling him something might be the, and it has something to do with uh, vascular dementia, right? Which my uncle kind of, well, we never truly knew because he had a stroke that affected a part of his brain. Um, and the doctor did said that he was not able to recognize us or to know who we were. And he left him without being able to speak at all. So we never knew if he recognized who we were, right? Uh, especially his, his siblings, my mom, my other aunt and my other uncle, you know, we don't know if he was able to recognize them. And that was something that, you know, pained them, you know, pain the, all of them a lot, you know, to see him in that bed and uh, not being able to know if he was able to recognize us or not. Sometimes it felt like he did. Sometimes it, it didn't, you know. And by the end, I feel that he was just simply not 
there i mean his his eyes you know the look in his eyes were he was looking at you but he was he, his his eyes just went past you so he was not really looking at you but what i always did said to my mom was like he might not know who we are he might because there was no confirmation because he couldn't talk this is what the doctors are saying but you know he might not be able but he's alive but because he lasted almost a year after the the stroke um uh, i know that he can feel love so give him your love you know show him your love don't cry keep that for later but show him your love because he will be able to feel that your love your tenderness your patience your prayers even you know just hold him love him he will feel that he did respond to that you know because every time he you know he couldn't move well or like uh, much but every time you stroke you know his head and things like that he you could see that he was like you know he closed his eyes and kind of like lean into it you know and i i was always like yeah i mean he can still feel us he he might not know who we are but he feels let like i he should feel our love you know so um i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> or where that had to do with the thing that we were talking about but the thing is that it's kind of the same thing that they were dealing with but now they're dealing with he roderick is deal dealing with the hallucinations and his hallucinations are awful because he feels that he's the one who killed his children and the first one he talks about is perry right and perry's passing and we know that his kids are going to die in a pro in 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 a matter of two weeks this is what happens right and now it is started with him now do we know if uh frederick's wife also died we don't know that yet since she's not an usher i don't think he considers oh another death in my you know he might they might think that she's just but i'm gonna guess that they will find out right I, I, I don't know, man. Um, maybe she did escape at the end of the day. Though it didn't seem like she did. Uh, but that... Okay, that death, you know. And it is caused by something that belonged to him, right? That was one of his buildings that these lawyers were like... It's leaking and like it's like pour, pouring assets and, and, and lethal you know, um, uh, substance into the world, into the environment, and you're not doing anything, you know, and they're like, well, if it, it, if it, if it is, you know, we will tear it down, and they were supposed to be tearing that down months ago, and they didn't, you know, and, Ro uh, uh, P Perry goes in, and he's naive enough to think that this is just a building, you know, he doesn't listen, to everything that is being said in that that meeting where you know there's assets and things like that and he just decides to okay there's go it's going to rain at the at midnight and and of course he doesn't put acid into the things you know he puts water but i'm pretty sure that everything the system is infected you know and it is producing more acid and that is what is ultimately released and kills a bunch of elite people you know so it's to like the thought of it is just awful and it's painful to even watch but man was it like oh my god it was disgusting it, but there are people i'm um, that will be saved right because there there are people inside of the rooms Right, so maybe the the woman got inside of one of the rooms because apparently there were twelve rooms or something like that. But he wanted to fuck with his brother, you know, and the way that he wanted to fuck with his brother was to fuck his wife, you know. So I don't know. It's not like Frederick doesn't deserve a little bit of revenge, I guess. But 
look what this got Perry, you know. Anyways, anyways, this was a very good episode. Carla, Carla, the love of my life. I couldn't concentrate when she started like cat walking on top of that bed. Oh my god, my lord is testing me. Lesbian Jesus is testing me, you know. And I, I am weak. I am one of the weakest soldiers, lesbian Jesus. Like, I cannot. Like, how gorgeous is she? And then, can we talk about how fucked up all of them are? Minus the the uh, Vic, I think. Or the other one. that I don't know his name. Because they were, like... The the woman, that, like... The, the, the one with the red hair. Uh, Annabelle, I think is her name. Walks in. A woman. Also with a wig, with a red hair. And then... They are, like, doing this... Look, they're consenting adults, so I'm not judging, okay? But that's her thing, apparently, to just, like... That maybe that's how she processes her things, you know, and doesn't really want to talk to her husband. But, like, her husband is able to interact with this other woman, maybe because she's not able to give him that intimacy that he requires. So she says, I'm gonna hire someone, so... You can talk to her instead of me and I'm just going to watch. There are people who gets off by just watching, you know. I mean, if you watch porn, I guess you're in the same position. But, like, she's rich enough to make it life, you know. So, I guess. And, look, like I said, there are adults in a consenting relationship. And that other woman, woman is consenting to this. So for her, right? She's making money if she wants to. I'm not here to judge anyone, to be honest. You know, so... But yeah, apparently she gets off. And like, does she get off because of the woman? Because I was like, are you gay? Is everyone gay? (laughs) Uh, Are all all the women, are, are all of them queer? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I want to find out. And then you have also uh, Camille, right? Who has these two people that I thought were her assistants who work for her. And they dress, you know, it's very, you know, uh, gender neutral kind of thing. Because they, they both wear skirts, right? And then, and then she's like, you know. And then they go to bed and wait for her. And also, I saw half of her nipple or like a quarter of of her nipple. I'm very happy about that. The gaying means like, yes. (laughs) Because she had a lace thing, you know, going on. And I saw a nip. A small, it was like a fraction of it. But still, I'm happy. You know, I'm going to bed very happy today. So, uh, and also she has a cage in her room. So what the fuck is she into? I don't know, but I'm into it too. So, (laughs) I don't know. While, you know, if it's consenting adults, I'm okay with it. But there is a power dynamic there though. Because she's the boss, you know. So... I don't know if that is appropriate or not. I mean, if I was in their situation, I would be like, rail me. I'm not trying to sound horny or anything, but like, I will do that. Because <laughs> it's Kate Se- Siegel, you know? So I will be like, girl, yes, and absolutely fucking yes. But I don't know if in the greater scheme and like more morally is it correct or not because she is ultimately her boss, their boss. I don't know. Who am I to judge her? No one. <laughs> but yeah, all of them cray cray. Uh, and then we understand what the mesh thing in the heart is for is to detect. Which honestly could save a lot of of lives. But apparently, you know, the dad is like, I want results in six months. And this should be ready 
for trials for humans. And it's not ready. You know, it's not ready. Um, but he's pushing it. And I'm going to guess it is because of the conversation he had. Because, like, he is afraid that he's going to die. Because, like I said, rich people want to live forever. Because they want more money. I don't know. Anyways, this was a great episode. Next episode is titled Murder in the Rue Morgue. And it has Camille in the thumbnail. And I don't want her to die this, this early on the season. Can she be the last one to die? Please, because I don't want to have to go through, you know, all of this and her dying in the first, in in the third episode. No, let her live until the very end. Until she makes out with Carla. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry, okay? Go for the first one. (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, so, love the episode. Uh, Cannot wait for more. And yeah, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to savor it. So I do know that I said on the schedule that I will finish it this month. I'm going to try my best to do that. But also I'm going to savor it. Because like, I've been consuming. And like, I feel like I want to slow down a bit. Not too much though. Because for instance, sex education, I want to binge in like two days. And I want to do the entire second season already. Because like, I'm like, I need to. You know, but with this one, let's take it, let's take a bit, you know, just to let everything process. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support. I hope you guys enjoy my reaction and my very long rant, which if you are new to my channel or to my Patreon, this is what I do. I rant a lot. and I don't stop. Even though I should. But now I'm going to stop. Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys continue to learn for more. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. On kind of reactions, always post their first on Patreon. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support. You guys are amazing. And for now, that's about it. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, tomorrow, probably for sex education. Or Drake and Josh. One of those. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and for all your support. And I'll see you guys later for more episodes of this incredible show. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.